Coming up this week on Sporting Journal Radio. Yesterday we caught Kings, Cohos, Browns, Lakers. Could be up in the Upper River catching muskie. Look where you're at. Look at this. This is kind of cool. I fish, I hunt, and always will. Broadcasting from the Alclair Outdoor Studios. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. <clears throat> We're not just a radio show anymore. This is Sporting Journal Radio. Welcome to Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen. Thanks for tuning in on the network by demand, sportingjournalradio.com, or watching this on YouTube. Thank you. That's Dan Amundsen. Hi. What's up, Dan? Kind of sinking into this chair. <laughs> it's like the first time I've sat down in a while. Well, it is probably the first time you have sat down in well, a few a minutes. Yeah. yeah. Stood most of the day today fishing. Sure did. I don't like sitting fishing anymore. I've missed too many fish that way. Mm. Did you miss a lot of fish today? Not today, but in general in my lifetime. I've learned. We got just got done fishing two days here on the Niagara River. Man, what a cool place to fish. What a cool place to be. Just the history around this area is insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a big history buff, but it is. Yeah. It, anytime you come east in the United States, I've learned uh, just how young Minnesota really is. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we think we have some cool history in our state, and we do in the Midwest, and there's a lot of cool things there. But then you come here, and it's like, oh, that building is older than our entire state, you know, or whatever it is. There's just a lot of cool stuff going on here. And then to have this fishery smack dab in the middle of it all, like you don't think of coming to the thought of going to New York in my head. And everyone thinks New York City, of course, we're a couple New hours York away from City. there. Yeah, screw that place. But even so, it's like New York State, what's there? This is here and this is really cool if you're an angler. Yeah, it's uh, an amazing fishery. We're gonna be talking about the Niagara River. Uh, Frank Campbell from Destination Niagara USA is gonna be joining us. He's been a long time fishing guide here, also uh, head of tourism out here. Uh, we're gonna talk to him about this fishery and what he likes about it. Also, uh, Joe Henry will be joining us to talk about his time out here and, uh, and why we're here as part of the Aglow Media Camp. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, Rainy River and Lake of the Woods too, of course, here in just a little bit. And then our guide today was Dave Saponi. Uh, what's what is he he's an interesting guy because to, to, to balance his fishing guide business and his other business that's kind of a unique situation it's like true new york yeah new yorkin i don't know what they call him here new yorker new yorker I, sure yeah. new yorkian new, new york new, new yorkite york uh, so we'll tell you what that job is coming up in a little bit, but we should talk about who this show is uh, brought to us by. Invergrove Toyota, the official truck sponsor of Fish Hunt Forever is Invergrove Toyota. When looking for your new rig, head over to Invergrove Toyota. Hey, Bell Heights Campground and Resort, fish uh, out of the snow bear in the winter or take a summer trip to Devil's Lake. Learn more at haybellheights.com. Onyx Hunt, landowner information, public land access, and much, much more. No where you stand with Onyx Hunt. Prairie Sportsman, new episode this Sunday, and you could watch other episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. And Lake of the Woods Tourism, can't wait to be up there next weekend. Uh, Lake of the Woods and the Rainy River is the walleye capital of the world. Plan a trip for this spring or summer at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. So this is our second trip up here to the Niagara River now, Dan. Um, last year we came up, we actually got to fish for walleyes a little bit a little last bit, year yep. too. This year it's yep. closed. Yep. Um, what, what do you think? Last year, this year, how was the fishing for you? This year was better. Uh, water conditions were better. Last year, so what we've learned here is when Lake Erie doesn't freeze, which isn't happening as much anymore, um, winds will kick up the dirty water of Lake Erie because, so this this is the Niagara River smack dab in the middle of Lake Erie, Lake Ontario's below. So that water filters in, gets all dirty. This year we had cleaner water, cleaner water, better fishing. You caught a, potentially a personal best fish on this trip. The rod holder did it. If you're, if you're not in the outdoor industry, you should become a member of a GLOW because this is the kind of stuff we get to do out here. And uh, I know, Dan, growing up, we fished the Boundary Waters a lot yep. and, and have fished for smallmouth in different places. And I definitely caught some 20-inch smallies uh, up in northern Minnesota. Uh, I haven't fished them as much this time of year, though. And that fish you caught yesterday was rotund. Yeah, it was a nice fish. And it's unique out here. In Minnesota, it's kind of unique, the fact that there's a closed season for bass. You know, it's catch and release only out here, but a lot of states have kind of gone to that catch and release bass mentality. I know a lot of bass anglers in our state want it to be catch and release mm -hmm. uh, year round. Because this time of year, if you can get on them, you can get on some fat fish, right? Bass are, you weigh bass. That's how people measure them, inches. This isn't quite the thing in the bass world. 
but you can get them just fat as can be. And so to get to fish for pre-spawn smallies is kind of a cool thing, especially when they're Great Lakes pre-spawn pre -spawn smallmouth, because <laughs> you're just gonna have some giant fish. You know, you, you know Lake Erie has giants, Lake St. Clair, uh, Lake Ontario, of course. Um, this whole stretch of the world kind of seems to have big smallmouth throughout the rivers and the Great Lakes. And then of course we have big ones, you know, imagine fishing Mille Lacs right now. Yeah. For smallmouth, you get on some big ones, you'll just get some giants. And we have big smallmouth in Minnesota, and I know there's anglers itching to do it, but this is a place you get to come do it. And we saw that. A couple multiple boats saw those fish. Whether we were targeting them or not, we got to experience what these fisheries like Ontario the Niagara River have to offer. Yeah, we're going to spend most of our time this week on the show talking about steelhead and lake trout, uh, even brown trout. Browns, like a lot amount, of browns. amount of brown trout. And then, and we were catching some smaller ones and some nice ones. And then uh, Frank Campbell's like, yeah, we might get a 30 pounder because he sounds just like that. Kind of, sort of, kind of, it's <laughs> sure. 30 pound brown trout. I mean, I don't care what kind of fish you're talking about. When you're talking about a 30 pound fish, that's a big fish. It's kind of a small sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you're talking about a sturgeon, I guess. But so the chance had a big brown trout and we caught a bunch of browns out yeah. here. Um, but we're not, you know, like smallmouth didn't really enter my brain that much. The, the fact that you can come out here this time of year, especially and catch some really nice smallmouth. Year round, there's going to be smallmouth in this area and, and big ones. You know, it's it's the Great Lakes. Anytime you're dealing with Great Lakes fish, you're just that size is going to be there. It's It seems to be the bigger body of water, the bigger the fish. It's like Lake of the Woods. Big fish, big water, big fish. I love fishing big water and, and that's why. We saw why. There's just plentiful fish. The Great Lakes are cool because you get those trout mixed in. You know, we did the same thing all day yesterday basically all day yesterday. Uh, we threw swim baits around a little bit, didn't didn't catch anything jigging or, or throwing swim baits, but we did the same thing and we caught, well, I couldn't count past two species because I <laughs> lost track of counting, but uh, multiple species and, and trout, salmon, and then bass, you know, all doing the same thing. And I know there's other fish mixed in that we pulled over that we didn't end up catching, but it's, uh, it's a fun thing. Rivers and Great Lakes are fun, just the size of the fish and then the multiple species. That's a cool thing. Yeah, it, it's just a, a really unique place to go and uh, a lot of different species that you can target and you can come out here and do it yourself. You can pull a boat out and launch it here, stay right here or wherever. Uh, and then there's a number of guide services out here. We've, we've fished with, I mean, two different guide services last year yep. out here and then essentially two different guide yep. services this year. So in, in four days of fishing out here, we got to fish with four different captains out here and uh, they all knew their stuff and uh, they all knew how to catch fish. The presentations are, you know, it's interesting going to a new place uh, and fishing, you know, it's it's a little different style of fishing, but they're they're using diff some different methods. I mean, it's some three ways and some mm -hmm. weights. So ultimately, it's all kind of the same, but it's just a, a little different. There's Sweet little for the lo local area. Little nuances that either the, our brains will come out here and say, what can we learn from what they're doing and and bring back home? But at the same time, it's. You know, what we were doing today, I was wondering, huh, what if we did this? What yeah. if we did that? You know, we were tying on pencil weights to these three-way rigs. And I know with a drop shot, a lot of people will tie their drop shot weights on too, but they're kind of designed with the little, the, the, the eye that you put your line through on a drop shot weight, you essentially can just slide it in there and cinch the line up and have it hold without tying a knot. And part of me wondered, would that save us a little bit of time? You know, cause when we're getting snagged, a lot of times weight's getting snagged, you're just pulling that out. Well, why not just do something like that? It's little things like that, that does it really make a difference in the amount of fish you're gonna catch? No, not really. Might save you a few times, you know, a little bit of knot tying and this and that. But little things like that, it's fun to just let your brain wonder about and, and take what we've learned here and bring something home and apply to our fishing back home or at the same time vice versa. But that's uh, it's kind of how you become a better angler is seeing what other anglers do in other parts mm -hmm. of the world and, sure. and taking pieces of it. And I love that. It's it's a ton of fun. We have one more night here. As of this recording, we have one more night here in uh, Lewis Center in the Niagara Falls area. Have you eaten enough chicken wings, no. buffalo wings? No, no, never. Never. These are the best chicken wings. I'm not a wing guy. Like people freak out about Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't care if I ever go there again. I don't go to a restaurant and eat chicken wings. I just don't. But if I come here, I don't know what it is. They're just good. Maybe it's all in my head because the original chicken wing, Buffalo wing, this is Buffalo, New York, Niagara Falls, this area. But ah, there's something about it. It's delicious. New York pizza. We've had last year we had some of the best pizza I've ever had. 
And um, I am kind of hoping we get to sneak into that uh, not bar, and I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but sneak in there in Niagara Falls and, and Sauce play. Sauce on top. Yeah, the pizza. a little bit. And then we had Thin crust. Nintendo 64. Yeah, we got to play Mario Kart on the N64 while we bar. waited for our food in the bar and bubble, and, hockey, and bubble hockey, which that's not all that new. We were familiar with that as Minnesotans, but... Um, yeah, but we don't even see that back in Minnesota yeah, in the bars. Some some places, anymore. in some places, but you don't see Mario Kart and get to sit down and drink all the little bat you want, eat the best wings of your life, and then uh, play Mario Kart after a great day of fishing. Well, we'll see. We'll see what they got in store for us tonight out here. But it's part of, been a part of an Aglow Media Camp. We've been filming the whole thing. You'll be able to watch on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel, which, by the way, has a new video from our Rainy River trip last week. Uh, for the SGR 500, go check that out now. Fish Hunt we'll link forever, it right here, or there, or wherever. I don't know, somewhere in this vicinity, it'll be linked. Make sure you subscribe to that channel as well. Uh, we also have a new Prairie Sportsman out this weekend, and it's from a Lake of the Woods trip actually last year with a group of guys who I, I couldn't figure out if they enjoyed fishing more or giving each other a hard time. You're going to laugh. Make sure you watch for that on the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel or 7.30 Sunday night on Pioneer PBS. And we should mention, too, that the public meeting that was going to be at Upper Red Lake to talk about the land transfer on April 20th has been uh, canceled as of this time. They figure the word's gotten out. All the, all the people that need to know about the deal, they all know about it, and uh, just stay tuned for more information. So uh, from Niagara River, during an Aglow Media Camp at Niagara Crossing right now, we'll be right back. we got more coming up with Frank Campbell, Joe Henry, and Dave Saponi. Stay there. 852 million acres of public land, 147 million private properties, all in the palm of your hand. The number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx. Know where you stand with Onyx. This is our official pickup of Sporting Journal Radio and Fish Hunt Forever. This is what we took up to Lake of the Woods. And the beauty of this truck is it's really comfortable to drive. Plenty of towing and pulling power, so we brought Dan's boat up there. Didn't even know we had a boat half the time behind it, but it's got so many cameras around it, it's nice because you can, you can constantly check how the boat is running. You can see if you got gear in the pickup bed, you can see how the gear back there is running, make sure nothing's blowing out. And of course, it's super comfortable and climate controlled with heated or cooled seats along the way. And for the SJR 500 this year, we donated over $500 to keep it clean at Lake of the Woods. And that's one of our missions here at Fish Hunt Forever is to preserve our outdoor traditions, our hunting and fishing and angling rights, and also preserve those opportunities for future generations. And Invergrove Toyota loved that, and that's why they wanted to be a part of Fish Hunt Forever. So go see Invergrove Toyota. They're located off of Robert Street, 494 in Invergrove, Minnesota. Tell them you want to get yourself a new Toyota Tundra or one of the new Tacomas that uh, are coming out here in 2024. These are neat trucks. And uh, tell them you want, to get, you want a Fish Hunt Forever deal. You can find out all the information at Sporting Journal Radio com or go to fishhuntforever.com. Thank you for being the official truck sponsor, Invergrove Toyota. All right, our guest now is Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, how's it going? Doing awesome, man. Look where you're at. Look right. at this. This is kind of cool. This is uh, another Aglow trip, which uh, again, you've got you got me into Aglow a couple years ago. I was trying to remember how that all went down uh, a few years back. Uh, because somebody was asking me about my first aglow trip and it was up at Lake of the Woods and we did a cast and blast up there and that's where I met Mark Smith. And I couldn't for the life of me remember how that all went down. So I know for a while you were at, you're like, you gotta get into a glow. It's the Association of Great Lakes Outdoor Riders and you do enough in the outdoor space. It's all about outdoor content creation, outdoor content creators. And uh, did you just tell me to come up for that trip? I think, I think what happened was I just, I, I pretty much said, hey man, I know you, I know a glow. It, it would be an absolute win-win for a glow to have you as part of a glow and for you to be associated with the many different talented people at a glow it would help your business it would just be great and i said we got it we got an event coming up why don't you just come to it just check it out i think we filmed a pretty sportsman episode maybe that was the deal and i and you know, so you invited us up, and I said, all right, we, this will be good for Prairie yeah. Sportsmen. So yep. we filmed a cast and blast, went goose hunting, and then went walleye fishing with, with Paul Johnson. And uh, I think that, was that 2018? I don't remember. 
2018 or 2019? Years go by pretty fast so when you get old. So here we are in 2024 <laughs> at, at Lugan over Niagara River right now. Well, and I'll tell you, you know, and I don't know, I'm sure you can't see behind me, but that Niagara River, it's kind of cool because that water, that water color is the color of Lake Erie, I and mean, that's where it's coming from. But the water is kind of that aqua bluish, mm -hmm. and, and that water is ripping through there. And like Frank Campbell said, uh, you know, that water is deep and it's swirling and it's there's a lot of water moving through that river. Yeah, it's like 750,000 gallons per second yeah, or something. It's crazy. Something like that. What a neat place. Yeah. So, um, la it's yeah, like Dan haven't, and I haven't had a second to breathe. Last week we were up at the Rainy River yeah. for our big party. And uh, Joe, everyone I've talked to, it has to have been one of the best springs ever up there, or in oh. recent memory anyway. Yeah, I just, I just talked to... Uh, uh, Max, Matt Skoog, who is the, uh, the fisheries supervisor um, up at Lake of the Woods, and he said, you know, he said, most years I'll get some calls about this or calls about that, but fishing was so good this spring, and even this winter, I hardly got any calls at all. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny, but you know, uh, it was just incredible fishing. You know, we, uh, the walleye fishing was on fire. Um, and then, and then the sturgeon fishing. I mean, when you're thinking about 30 or 40 fish a boat per day yeah, that's for wild. sturgeon, I mean, holy man, you know. And and the walleyes, you know, at one point in time, uh, uh, the second day of the tournament, we were fishing, and you know, we were on some nice fish. We finally found a, a pot of them, and you know, it was like, ah, uh, you know, a couple good head chicks. Ah, that's just another 25. And it would be pull it in, net it, take it off, just a couple pictures, okay. You know what, here, let me take my coat off, I'll get a picture with my sweatshirt on. I mean, you know, but it was it was so, <laughs> tw 24 and 25 inch walleyes being cookie cutter. And of course, my biggest for the day was at 28 and a half, which it mm. took me third place for the tournament. And actually there was a tie for, for 28 and a half, I think. And I'm um, looking at the pictures, like you said, the other the other walleye that the other gentleman caught was a little bit longer. Yep, yeah, and it was. And, uh, but what, what, a, what some good fishing though, huh? I mean, just the whole thing was just really good. We didn't want to leave. Yeah. I mean, if we weren't coming here, <laughs> we might still be at Lake of the Woods. Yeah, it I was... mean, we'd be fishing for sturgeon now, of course, but uh, we we would we did not want to leave. Well, the walleye season, you know, the last day was April 14th, and you know the uh, the sturgeon season that continues on through May 15th. Some of it's a you know, catch and release only season, some of it's a keep season, but the bottom line is through May 15th, and then she, she shuts down all the way for the second half of May and through June. And then of course, July 1, it opens up again for the whole year, all the way to April. Yeah, there's a good chance we get back and Dan drives straight to the Rainy River. He's mentioned that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a good chance of it. So, uh, okay, so the the regular season opener now, back in May, I've had a few people now recently ask me about May, the May opener, uh, and, and how good it might be. May 11th. Yeah, May 11th. Yep. Um, fishing opener at Lake of the Woods because of tradition or whatever, it's it's maybe not as busy as people realize it, it, it might be. I, I think you're right. I think I think it's one of those things where it's almost like the 4th of July. You just assume that it's just packed up there. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, I think people have family traditions and their own lakes and their own body of waters and stuff. But I'll tell you what, if you don't have a family tradition, if you can make it up, I mean, you know, we, we always, I, say, I shouldn't say always, Almost, most of the time, fishing up at Lake of the Woods on the opener is really good. It's a jig bite. Some fish are left over in the river, some are in Four Mile Bay. You know, there's there's fish spread out across that whole south shore. And of course, the angle, you know, fish up there are so plentiful that mm -hmm. it's it's game on. And um, But but this year, with all the fish staged out in front of the south shore for ice fishing, and those fish, we left them there in March when the ice went out, and uh, those fish are still gonna be there. Yeah, well, I, when, some of the questions I got were based on the conditions we ended up having this spring, if fish might be in the river a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But w really, when you look at it, it ended up being about the same as it normally is. It balanced it? out now. Yeah. Yep, it balanced out now, and I think it is gonna be kind of normal. And yeah, there'll be some fish in the river, no doubt. But they'll also, some of those fish will have gone back to the lake, and, and some will be in Four Mile Bay. So nor, nor, I think it's gonna be kind of a normal year if, if there is such a thing. and. Uh, uh, it's going to be good. Fishing's going to be good. Mark my words. It's going to be. And, and that jig bite on Lake of the Woods early in the year, you know, usually through June as a rule, that jig bite, just jigging over the side of the boat with maybe a frozen emerald shiner and bouncing that jig in the bottom and keeping it off a little bit and feeling that little tap. Or sometimes what I do is I lift it up a little bit because you, you just feel a little bit of extra weight on there. And that doesn't feel right. Set the hook and there's a big walleye hanging. 
how a big walleye can just hang on there. I don't know, but that's what happens. And that jigging's a, it's a fun bite, as it's, you know. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. I love it. Then this past trip up there, it didn't matter how big or small those walleyes or saugers were, they were trying to rip the rod out of your hand yeah. when they hit it. It's just like, <laughs> thunk, that. You, you know, it's funny, Brett, because um, when I talk to pro walleye anglers who travel all around and fish all different bodies of water, they have told me before how, man, your walleyes up a lake, the woods are freaking angry. They yeah. fight. They <laughs> fight. You know, they really do. They say that. They're and they're, they're hunting the big fish, you know. Yeah. Well, we got a double whammy for you this week, Joe. We got our uh, Rainy River SGR 500 video out on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube cool. channel. And then we've got our, uh, we've got a video coming to Prairie Sportsman this Sunday night at 7.30 on Pioneer PBS. And it's that group of uh, group of guys that work together that have done an annual trip. They've been going to Lake of the Woods now for a number of years. They, they used to go to other places. They've kind of settled into Lake of the Woods. Thought maybe last year might be their last year. This year now they're doing it again. Cool. This may be the last year. They keep saying that, but I, I have a feeling they'll keep it going for a few more, few more years yet. But uh, it's hilarious. We caught some big fish up there. It was from last June, last summer. Uh, there's some big fish caught, and the stories are are hilarious from this group of guys. So that'll be on the new Prairie Sportsman episode. And now um, a couple of those guys are asking me about summer fishing for sturgeon up there, actually. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, the river, you know, a fish, summer fishing that river. You know, you, you, I, I won't say the river to yourself, figure of speech, but you, there's not a lot of boats on the, on the river in the summer. I mean, most people are going to the lake to fish walleyes. And, you know, uh, it's so relaxing, it's so pretty, it's so nice. You know, it can be a blowing hard and you're still fine on the river. I mean, it's just a neat, neat deal. And uh, you will catch a lot of fish in the, in the, in the summertime. I mean, you still got to find those sturgeon. I mean, you know, right now, and you could 30, 40 in a day per boat. Oh, that's crazy. That's, that's kind of unbelievable. You know, in the, in the summertime, you know, if you catch, you know, five to 20 in a day. I mean, that's still a nice fishing. And, uh, you know, I got to be careful what I say because, you know, you, you can really light it up. If you get in a sturgeon hole, yeah. you can really light it up, you know. Well, obviously, we we saw it happen, and, and in our video, we've got Dan looking at side scan or live scope or something. I can't remember looking at all the sturgeon yeah. on the screen, and that, or maybe it was just down down scan. I can't remember. But uh, Brett McComas just put a video out too of up there sturgeon yeah. fish, and he's looking on the live scope, and it's just it's it. I think one of us or him, I can't remember, made the comment. It's looking at, it's like looking at a stack of crappies, like a school of crappies, and it's all sturgeon. Well, what was interesting to me is that, and the sturgeon are big, but you might have eight sturgeon on your screen at a time when you're in them, and you got three or four in the bottom, and you got a few suspended. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting, and they were just hovering, like they weren't mm -hmm. moving through. They were just kind of hanging there, you know. And are they eating? Are they resting? Who knows what's going on, but. Yeah, you know, we always talk about what we learned with live posing, I think, is they're, what they're doing. They, they knew. Yeah, maybe we had a sturgeon simulator mode on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's unbelievable. And, you know, you hear about a place like this where we're at now, and they've got sturgeon in here, mm -hmm. but they can't fish for them. Oh, interesting. So they're uh, they're not allowed. Uh, if, you, if you catch them by accident, you're not, I don't think you're supposed to take a picture, you know, that whole bit. So uh, we're pretty fortunate where we're at. And the message needs to be spread, just how world-class that fishery is for sturgeon and how unique mm -hmm. that opportunity is. And, and what, a, what an opportunity for anglers and the, the, the tourism economy, the local economy, things like that, the amount of people, just the, the unique fishing opportunity that, opportunity that uh, sturgeon is on the Rainy River. Yeah, you know, it's become a tradition for many, and it's become a go-to fish, almost like, in a way, almost like muskies. You know, sometimes a, an angler will catch a big muskie, and all of a sudden they're bit by that muskie bug, and that's all they want to do is muskie fish now. The, the rest are just bait fish, right? Yeah. Well, you know, with sturgeon, kind of the same thing. We, we talk to people all the time, they're like, man, after feeling the power of a sturgeon, it's so beautiful in the river, man, they, 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 you know, they fight so hard. You know, I want to go sturgeon fishing. Let me go sturgeon fishing. And uh, we hear it over and over. Traditions have been formed. You know, uh, the DNR says that we have, from, from that Morrison, Ontario area, all the way down through the Northwest Angle, through uh, Big Traverse Bay, through the Rainy River, there's about, they estimate about 100,000 sturgeon over 40 inches long. Hmm. That's a lot of sturgeon. That's over 40 inches long, but that's that's a nice sturgeon. That's a lot of inches. That's a lot of inches. A lot of inches right of sturgeon is. right yeah, it there. Is. It's it a is. lot of fish. No, it's it's great, and there's so much fun to catch, even on heavy gear, like uh, the, the fight that they put up. And, and we found, 
You know, I've, I've noticed this in big lake trout too, that sometimes those, like the beginning of the upper sized fish. So with sturgeon, if we're talking like upper 40s, low 50 inch fish, sometimes those put up the bigger, the biggest fight. Yeah. And you think you got a, you know, just a world record beater on there. I suppose that would be kind of like a, uh, like a 23 to 25 year old guy, kind of in its prime. <laughs> right, Danny? <laughs> this oh, look at that mustache he's showing off, boy. Yeah. You know, if he doesn't have the prime of his life as far as physicality, man, he's got that mustache going on. That makes up for a lot, you gotta admit. <laughs> That's right. It's we call him Freddy for a reason. Power of the stash. <laughs> All right, Joe, if people wanna get up to Lake of the Woods uh, yet, for the sturgeon yet this spring or start thinking about summer, what should they do? You know, best way uh, to get a hold of us, you, certainly our, our Facebook page has current information. Otherwise, it's our website, and that is lakeofthewoodsmn.com. All right, more from the Niagara River with uh, Frank Campbell and our guide today, Dave Saponi, coming up next. Northern Minnesota's Walleye Factory is a year-round world-class fishing destination. The perfect getaway this summer is just a short drive to Lake of the Woods. Fish Big Traverse Bay, the Rainy River, or visit the unique Northwest Angle. To catch big fish, you have to go where the big fish are. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com. All right, it's not very often that we go out on a fishing trip and somebody hands us one of these and says, eat what's inside of it. Normally, what, when we see things like this, it's uh, stuff that we're feeding to the fish. And uh, Dave Saponi, yep. Dave Saponi is with us right now and that's who took us out today. What, first of all, what is this? What are we eating here? So that's uh, my father's famous homemade supersada recipe. Supersada. Yep, supersada. It is, <clears throat> that's the correct Italian pronunciation. Okay. And uh, basically it's, uh, a lot of guys will use pork butt or pork sirloin, it's ground, seasoned with just salt, pepper, and hung and air dried. And so it's almost like a pork jerky, salami, that's pepperoni delicious. mix. Do you want some? Absolutely, <laughs> I never pass up some. <laughs> well, it's got some good bite to it, it's hot. That's good, Dan, do you want some? You better eat some back there. <laughs> All right. So, obviously you're a fishing guide, yeah. um, but your family has a, a background in, in food. Food service, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, well I want to talk about both those things, but first of all, let's just talk about how we did today. We just got off the water here. Niagara River, caught some steelhead, caught a lake trout. Um, probably a little bit of a slower day today, but yeah, overall we caught some nice fish. Yeah, a little slow, but uh, you know, that's fishing. Yeah, it's fishing, yeah, yeah that's right. But it's, it's such a unique fishery and you, you never really know because obviously water conditions are changing day to day, current conditions change day to day. Absolutely. Uh, but, and there's so many different species of fish in there. Yeah, there really and, is. And nice sized fish. I mean, it's a really un a unique place. It is, it's amazing and it, it fishes 365 days a year. You know, never, uh, never freezes. So we're always launching, launching in January and February. Um, not many places that you can actually boat and fish all 12 months of the year. Now, we were targeting the steelhead, lake trout, uh, brown trout, if the, if the opportunity presented itself, even salmon, and, and, and it's, I mean, there's so many different fish you could catch. Yeah. You know, I, I keep asking, well, what are we gonna target today? Whatever, whatever Yeah, whatever bites. wants to bite, really. <laughs> and uh, there's, um, Musky, walleye, sturgeon in there. Those seasons are all closed, of course. Sturgeon are always closed here, it sounds always like. Always endangered species. Sure, okay. Um, but you, you run into them once in a while. We do. Normally during salmon season, fish and skein, you'll see and pick, pick them up, and uh, occasionally you'll foul hook them. There's sure. Quite a bit, quite a bit of sturgeon in the river. And walleyes are closed right now, but there's some nice walleye in this. Beautiful this walleye. Um, yeah, and within the last 10 years, uh, it has really taken off. I think they lowered the, the, the limits um, and just conservation and people, you know, being more aware and fishing them. I think that's why we're seeing so many numbers. Um, and, and the sizes too, we're getting 12, 13 pounders. <laughs> big walleye, big walleye. Niagara River grows everything big though. I wanna talk to Frank. Why are we here when the walleye season isn't open? <laughs> Come on, Frank. Uh, well, obviously there's a lot of other big fish and you know, even some of the, like the, the steelhead and the lake trout, when you're talking about those species of fish, mm -hmm. um, 
all those sizes fight pretty hard. They do. They're strong they do. fish. Especially in the current. Yeah. You know, you get them in that Niagara River current, and an eight pound fish feels like a 20 pound fish, and sometimes you can't stop them, you know? Yeah. Well, an eight pound fish in itself is, is going to be a fun a fight. fight. That's yeah. a nice fish. And smallmouth. We haven't even mentioned smallmouth, and um, there were some smallies caught in the river today, and then when we were out on the lake yesterday, yeah. you guys. Yep put a couple real nice ones in the boat. You know, it's overshadowed by Erie, I think, in the upper mm -hmm. river, because every you think smallmouth, you hear buffalo and you hear uh, Lake Erie. But, I mean, we have big, big smallmouth here. We had a six and a half pounder yesterday, a five and a half pounder. You know, just this truck that's going by is distracting us just a little bit, but you look at what's on the side of it, and I don't know if the camera picked it up or not, but <laughs> it just makes me think of the history of the Niagara Falls area yeah, yeah. When, you, when you think about what, what this area ha has been like over the years and what a, you know, a tourist attraction the falls are and yeah, yeah. Uh, how uh, you know, a lot of people just try to bring people into this area and show them, show them the falls, show them the river, show them uh, some stuff and sell them stuff and things like that. So that, that's kind of what it reminded me of. But this, I mean, ta what, what draws you to the Niagara River? I've been fishing it ever since I was a kid. And uh, it's really the one thing that I feel besides my business uh, in the in the food industry, it keeps me here. You know, the Niagara River and and, and Lake Erie and, and Lake Ontario. Because I mean, you've got a couple of nice fisheries, the big lakes around you, and I suppose you, you kind of hit them all. But little spoiled. Do you spend more time in the river, you think, or out on the lakes? Uh, even, I would say it's okay. even. You know, uh, the river shuts down for me. I don't usually fish between pretty much end of May through to mid-July, it's just, it, mm -hmm. it's real mossy. The fish are in there, it's just hard to, to get at them without just being covered in seaweed and moss. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we tend to be out into the lake in, uh, during the, the summer months. Um, then in the fall, it's just, you know, it's too much going on. You could be up in the upper river catching musky, Lake Erie catching bass, down here catching trout. It's, uh, it's a good problem to have. It is a good problem <laughs> to have. And the salmon, obviously a lot of people are probably coming here for, for salmon. And yep, September, mid-September, they just start piling into the river. And, and you guys caught a couple kings yesterday. Uh, we got one, I think the other boat got two. Okay. Uh, Jeff Draper got two. Um, yeah, we were actually had a brown program going on. We were yeah. fishing five feet down and 20 feet of water, skinny water, and <laughs> 15 pound king just smacked it and took off, went through three of our lines. <laughs> And uh, we got them in the boat, that's all that matter. That's funny. We caught a couple of cohos, some smaller cohos, but uh, we didn't see any kings, but we, we caught some browns and a couple of fish. Like Dan, I think you were just flipping the, uh, we were running maglips maybe, or the stick baits, I can't remember. Yeah, they're probably a maglip. And you were with Campbell, right? Yeah, yeah, and just dropped it out. I, you, know, you was almost catching them in the prop wash yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, man, you know, you catch them right next to the, but they're not boat shy. Yeah. Um, we use Chinook divers. All right, and uh, basically you're letting out 10 feet of line, putting your rod in a rod holder, so you can literally look down and see your 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 diver and your spoon, and they're just smacking <laughs> it. It's pretty amazing. He saw one come up and hit it. Actually, yeah. watched it come up and grab it. Uh, it. It's a lot of fun, and um, so this so you're you're a fishing guide, but that's not your real job. I like to think it is, but uh, no, I'm a caterer, Yeah, you know, and we have a small uh, Italian restaurant, deli, that we operate, and that's been uh, since 1968, my parents started it, and uh, it's a really, it's got a long history, you know, I've been in it since I've been fresh out of high school, uh, 30 years, full time, so um, we've done parties as big as 10,000. Jeez. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, we do, we do them as small as 30. But uh, the only, the, the best function that comes to mind when I think about uh, catering and the history of my family's business, have you ever seen the movie Canadian Bacon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we yeah. got a call from Lionsgate Films and we went over and did uh, some catering for them. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't get to meet John Candy, but we got to meet the stunt doubles. And uh, he passed away shortly after that. Oh, but yeah. Nothing to do with our food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's cool. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you were feeding the crew, the cast and the yep. crew and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, neat. They didn't put you in the movie? No, they did. And I looked at the credits. They never did do that. So, Lionsgate, if you think about it, get us in there, will you? Did you make them Canadian bacon? 
That would have been good, but they, they chose the menu. <laughs> okay. So we, we, we make sausage, you know, it's, it is pork based, but uh, okay. no Canadian bacon. And you've got a place where somebody can stop in and have sandwiches. We, yeah. I, Frank Campbell took a Dan and I there last year. We yeah, right on Pine it. Avenue in the Falls, 3010 yeah. Pine Avenue. It's, That's uh, cool. You know, open 11 to 3 with our deli, but our catering is 365 days a year. So you need to set up uh, your fishing trip. You need to have some sort of, you know, people will do cast and blast trips. You need to have like a, a cast and ca cast and feast. Yeah, right. Yeah, have a grill on the back of the boat. Yeah. Or, uh, could do that. A lot of a lot of guys are like, can I just look, look through your menu and tell you what I want the night before and then you'll have it you on the boat in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to mix business and pleasure, you know. Sure. Well, if somebody wants to come out here and book a trip and fish with you on the Niagara River or yep. on the Big Lakes here, uh, what should they do? Uh, they can go to my website, saponifishing.com. I uh, call my cell phone. I'm Captain Dave Saponi at 998-6882. That's area code 716-998-6882. And uh, I'll book you myself. I think one thing that really surprised me is the size of some of these fish, like the size of the steelhead, even size of the brown trout and the and the salmon. Really, you can really get some some big fish we here. We do get big fish. It's just something about uh, it, what it really comes down to. I think it's the amount of bait fish. Uh, these fish are feasting, and they just get huge. You know, they they get big. We've I've gotten kings up to 30 pounds. Wow. Um, you know, steelhead pushing 20 pounds, and the browns. You know, they they go 30 plus. And guys will come out here and fly fish. There was a guy on, on shore with a center pin. Center pin and fly, fly rodding. You know, you get your jeans and sneakers, guys casting hardware, uh, and they all do well. Sure. You know, great right. fishery. And, and then when it comes to like your guiding season, are you guiding year round? Yep, I'm, I'm year round. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. never, never a month I don't. I don't guide so. And then, if somebody says this is the species I want to target, do you have different times of the year that you? Yeah, tell you know, them? if somebody wants to just target trout or, or whatever, I'll tell them. You know, fall of the year is great. Salmon, that's a little longer season. You can get it spring and summer, uh, and fall. So, uh, yeah, you tell me what you were looking to get, and I'll tell you the time frame. All right. Uh, Dave, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I had a great thank time you. out there today. Thanks My for the pleasure. thanks for the food too. No problem. It's very no good. problem. All right, more from the Niagara River here in uh, Lewiston or Niagara Falls, New York, coming up on Sporting Journal Radio. Now is the time to start thinking about chasing big walleyes on Devil's Lake. Get on the fish at Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort. Hay Bale Heights makes it easy for you to make memories on legendary Devil's Lake with guided fishing and lodging packages. Or bring your own boat and rent one of their cabins on East Bay. Hay Bale Heights offers a private marina, fish cleaning station, and the opportunity to relax and enjoy your bucket list trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. To book your trip, visit haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. All right, now uh, we're back here on Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for tuning in on the network by demand, sportingjournalradio.com. Maybe you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, Brett Amundsen, Dan Amundsen's back there. And Frank Campbell from Destination mm -hmm. Niagara USA joins us now. Frank, how you doing? I am doing all right, other than the sun's out now. Uh, you know, rain all morning, sun out now, and... Uh I don't have my sunglasses on. <laughs> I know, got bright out here all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, of course, we fished in the rain all day and then decided to come off the water and then it clears up. That is, that is uh, whatchamacallit, it's the way Mother Nature works, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, so uh, thanks for having us out here once again. It's always an adventure coming out here to the Niagara River. And uh, you know, the one, the one thing though, I have a bone to pick. Uh, you brought us out here when the walleye season was closed. Yeah, the walleye season, we do have a closed season until uh, May 1st, so you're about two weeks away. They close it from the March 15th to May 1st to protect the spawn. Um, and we really, I mean, I haven't been catching many walleye. It's, uh, they're worried about their spawning. The water temperature is just about right for it, so I don't think we're going to see too many walleye until they, until they spawn and then they get their recovery mode. So. Uh, if you catch a walleye, you're kind of lucky right now. Yeah, wow. We're a couple of guys from Minnesota. It's like <laughs> sacrilege to ask yeah. us to come out here when walleyes are closed. But uh, obviously, that's the beauty of this area and the lakes here. There's so many other species to target. And, I, and I'd and i bet that most people are coming out here for, uh, for salmon when that gets going anyway. Yeah, trout and salmon are the biggest draw. Yeah. Um, that being said, we have good fishing for all kinds of different species. But the <laughs> trout and salmon. Is it really bright? Yeah, you want some like, sunglasses? Yeah. I might have to. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got through that. I am. Oh, that's much better. Oh, there you go. I'm like, what? <laughs> I had to close one eye. Okay, we're better now. Yeah, good. 
good. But I mean, I, I mean, you got lake trout out there, brown trout, steelhead, and salmon. Uh, so there are a lot of different options and good size of those fish too. Yeah, I mean, I think yesterday was a perfect example. We went out and we caught uh, kings, we caught steel. I mean, yesterday we caught kings, cohos, browns, lakers, caught some monster smallmouth bass, all doing the exact same thing, targeting the same way. And then today we ran up the river and caught steelhead, uh, lakers, and bass, you know, up, up in the river. So the opportunities, I think, are, are there. And the nice thing is we knew we couldn't get in the lake today. We had the river as an option, mm -hmm. and it wasn't a bad option. I mean, all the boats <laughs> caught fish and caught some nice fish. Yeah. Yeah, now I know some day it's fishing, so some days are better than others. Um, but, you know, we had a, for, Honestly, when we looked at the weather forecast, we weren't sure we were going to be out there at all today. So we got out there and caught some nice fish. So Yeah, and I, I think that's pretty common here. I mean, you can usually, unless it's really extreme, you can usually get, a, get some fish going either in the lake, the river, the upper river. There's some place to hide from that weather. Obviously, if you have tornadic activity or, you know, hurricane winds, you're, you're not going to be out there. But other than that, I mean, if you want to tough it out through the rain and a, a little bit of cold and now it's beautiful, uh, you're going to catch fish or have the opportunity to catch fish. So when people say from Minnesota or wherever, Wisconsin, Texas, they call you up and say, I want to fish Niagara River, um, you know, what do you tell them? I mean, is there is there some DIY opportunities for guys? Obviously, there's some guide services, places to stay. What, for somebody that's watching this or listening that wants to come here, what do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, the first question I always ask them is, what are you looking to catch? You know, if, if you're looking to catch king salmon, there's certain time frames that you can catch them in the river, certain time frames you're gonna have to go out to the lake to catch them. So in, in the winter time, they're not really available. So, you know, you kind of figure out what the species that they're after, kind of figure out how they wanna target them. So do you wanna fish for them in the lake trolling? Or do you wanna come up in the river or rod and hand fishing uh, for them? So the lake is pretty, uh, cut and dry when it comes to salmon fishing. There's a lot of information out there on how to do it. You need your boat, you need, uh, you know, some of the proper gear, but it's not rocket science. You know, you kind of control depth fishing. You're looking for marks at a certain depth and you're fishing those marks. The river's a little bit tougher because it's a, you know, a rod and hand fishery up and down, but there's still a good opportunity for guys to come out on their own and do it. Uh, the river, Salmon fishing is a little little bit tougher, as I said, but there's also shore opportunities. You know, you catch a lot of fish offshore here. Every fish that we catch can catch or target in the lake and the river is available for, from shore, be it trout, salmon, walleye, bass, muskie. They're all accessible from shore, and they catch a lot of them and do quite well, you know, and it's not off the beaten path fishing. Sometimes it's right from the dock down below where we're at or you know, the, the art park area that has trails going down. So, uh, you know, it's a really uh, awesome fishery because it's, it caters to everybody. Mm -hmm. Well then, especially if you're gonna go up the, the river and go up to Devil's Hole where we at, you're gonna wanna go with a guide for that. Yeah, I would say definitely a, at least minimum your first time and a lot of guys are just aren't comfortable going up there the water changes it's there's a lot of current and even it's just not getting up there it's the boat control the boat mm -hmm. control is really key you really have to have that boat going at a certain speed to present your baits it's you know there's a lot more to it than just getting there you want to be able to get there, you want to be able to present properly, and you're going to catch fish by doing such. Well, and go, you're going under the big bridge, and then you're going by, uh, uh, essentially, what what would you call, it's the, it's it's a, a dam, I suppose, it's the a, two they're, dams. They're two power or? plants, they're hydroelectric power plants, and you have influence, water coming out of both of these plants, and then you have the river flowing, you know, at, at 18 miles an hour there. It, it can get hairy at times. There's really a route that we take to go up there, and it's never been to the point where it's, you know, unnavigable. But you better know what you're doing. Yeah, uh, and that river level changes. You said that at night they they make changes, and then during the day it's different. Yeah. So from uh, April 1st to November 1st, we have a a water draw where they draw the water at night, so the tourists don't notice the difference with the water volume coming over the falls. Interesting. They will actually fill these reservoirs behind uh, the U.S. power plant uh, overnight, 
and it takes from about seven in the night to seven in the morning they start drawing water they fill up the reservoirs on a continuous basis and then during the day they let it flow a little more freely so you know between the Canadian Falls and US Falls there's about 750 thousand gallons per second to flow over so <laughs> just what That's they're pulling in that water will actually change about 10 feet in the morning from the evening it's nuts but that tells you the volume of water that's being pulled into these reservoirs overnight and it'll change the way you fish and how you can fish and where you can fish too so for people coming out here whether they're driving out here or flying like us uh, obviously this is a really nice place to stay here at niagara crossing in, in lewiston because we're right across from the, the boat access right here so it's really convenient but uh, there are some other lodging options yeah absolutely i mean we're here it's convenient it, lewiston has has everything but not everyone wants to stay in a boutique hotel they want to look for the names that they're you know used to going to be at the Hilton Hyatt whatever it may be Niagara Falls has them all so Niagara Falls is about seven miles from here or you can take the mom and pop uh, scenario where you go down to the smaller motels right along the lake uh, it, you know just whatever fits your needs and that's the neat thing is no matter where you're staying it's pretty accessible to go to Lower River, Upper River, Lake Ontario, or Lake Erie from right here. It's all within 25 minutes. Yeah, I, you know, I, when we first heard about this, I, I personally just didn't realize how close to, you know, say Erie or even Ontario we yeah. were for that matter. So while we're fishing the river, you're also fishing at least Lake Ontario but most of the time or half the time probably anyway too. Yeah, yeah, and then like I said, the, the biggest thing is you have that ability to switch off. You know, you're in one area, Maybe the fishing's not as good or the weather's not conducive to where you want to be. You can go to another area and it, it can be, you know, on fire in perfect conditions. It's, it's really an asset that we have here, being able to travel. And also species. If you want to come down and catch salmon, you're not going to go to Lake Erie. But Lake Erie is home to, you know, probably the world-class walleye fishery, you know. Right. And, and also uh, bass fishing. So it's really cool that the accessible waterways that we have here. What about uh, like families that come out? Do people come out and bring their kids, bring their wives, bring the whole family out? Yeah, there? absolutely. I mean, we are in Niagara Falls pretty yeah. much. So Niagara Falls is one of the iconic places. It's a bucket list place. People want to go there and they do plan family trips here. There's a, you know, a lot of different things to do from the, the Whirlpool jet boat to history. We have Old Fort Niagara. We have a lot of wineries, uh, breweries, things like that. It's, it's just not the fishing. And I think that's one thing that sells the area is just being able to do more than just spending that six or seven hours on the water. There's things to do afterwards. All right, so uh, we got to wrap up the show here in just a second, but let's just talk about your history here. You've been fishing this river for a long time, haven't you? Wait, you calling me old? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been guiding. Experienced. Yeah, that's, I like better. I've been guiding for about 33 years on, on the river. And one thing that I'll say is the river has afforded me to be a guide full time for that 33 mm -hmm. years, because we really have a 12 month a year fishery. Uh, there's not a lot of other places that have open water year round and give you access to so many different species. So whatever people want to target, you know, we're able to do it. And I think that that's what has enabled me to, to do it full time for so long. It's, uh, you know, pick and choose what you want to fish for, when you want to fish for them, and it's usually good. So our biggest thing, you know, that I've learned over the years is getting people here for the first time, you know, and then they come back. So you, it's been easy for me to build my business. The Niagara River has a tendency to make a lot of fishermen look good. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's done it to me over the years, you know, when days you didn't think you should be catching them and you're catching them. So, you know, it's, you also got to go where the fish are. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think, what's gave me longevity in the guiding business. I've heard uh, somebody say that before. If you want to catch big fish, you got to go where the big fish are. Yeah. <laughs> might have been Joe. Might have been Joe Henry that said that. Man of wisdom words. It's uh, it's it's brilliant advice, really. Um, so what what I mean is there anything like with someone that's coming out here for the first time that they're like, wow, I didn't I didn't know that. What do you what what are they telling you? Well, I mean, I'll put it like this. Probably the biggest thing that I hear out here all the time is they didn't realize how big the river was hmm. you know it's a, it's a big river it's not your typical you know a uh, couple hundred yards across it's you know half a mile on average and it's and it's deep and certain areas move you know you got to really pay attention but there's enough information out there be it via 
the internet or watching TV shows, whatever it may be, that you can come up here and, and be ready to be a successful angler just, just based on the homework that you've done. Well, where can people find out more about this area? Uh, one, of the best, one of the best tools that we have is NiagaraFallsUSA.com and go to the outdoors page. There's uh, links to all the guides, links to all the uh, uh, launch ramps and where to get a fishing license. And there's also articles. We also give a, a weekly fishing report out at, at that site. So, you know, it's an all-inclusive, you know, everything about fishing in the area. All right. We're good. All right, Frank Campbell, thanks a lot. Thanks for having us Thank out again. You, I appreciate it. Thanks for the sunglasses. <laughs> Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.